Hey Jam Baggers and welcome to a new video of myself, Rudy Manchego. And today we'll be doing our super serious impressions of the new Evercade Retro Handhold Console. For full disclosure, absolutely no one sent us a review copy. We bought this out of our barely earned money because let's face it, no one watches this channel and we aren't popular enough to get any kind of kickbacks. Now, if you are in a position to supply us with free gear of any kind, we are completely for sale in every conceivable way. Mm -mm. Anyway, now that's out of the way, let's talk about what this gear actually is. Well, it's another retro handheld emulation device. I mean, these aren't exactly rare at the moment. Even I've got a few of them. I mean, check out this blue one, which I keep getting sent to Chinese for God knows what reason. I mean, what the hell is this thing? The buttons are made of blancmange. I don't know. Look, it isn't even a mini device like the NES or SNES Classic, the Mega Drive Mini, the Piddle Widdle Pico Plops, or Small Man's Amstrad. This is this interesting? Well, for a start, it plays licensed games. That's right, you're no longer a vicious emulator pirate of the high seas, destroying gaming culture by preserving unavailable titles to play. And secondly, you buy the games on cartridges. That's right, no dropping files on the memory cards, no pre-built list of games, actually physically big cartridges. Mmm, I like it. You see, this is the USP or unique spuffing position as the marketers would have it when it comes to this console. This is actually a fully fledged console as opposed to a mini with a set number of games or an emulator where you try your luck at getting stuff to work. This platform currently supports 10 cartridges that each carry somewhere between 6 and 20 games. Now this is at launch and there's a total of 122 games and there's already 4 more cartridges planned in the coming months and hopefully more as time goes on. But look, I'll, I'll get back to all that. Let's do some super sexy unboxing. For Father's Day I was lucky enough to get the premium pack which is the console and three cartridges of games. Now, when I say I, you know, I got it for Father's Day, I mean, I ordered it myself and gave it to my children to wrap because otherwise I'd end up with homemade presents and cards and no one needs that kind of shit after spending years bringing up kids. Let's get on with the unboxing, shall we? This is a first for our fledging channel and we need to treat this carefully and properly. Okay, so here you can see the lovely box all wrapped in cellophane and oh, it feels good in the hands. And there's the device with the three cartridges looking lovely. That's the side of the box. That's all the different games you get on it. You know, yeah, it's pretty nice. And ooh, it feels good. It feels really good. Mmm, I like that. Oh, give me, give me, give me. Let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get. Just get the scissors. And oh, be very careful, kids, when you're cutting this. That's it. Just, just go for it. Just slice it. Don't, don't, don't damage the box. That's it. Just cut the, cut the. Uh, that's it. Just do that. And really calmly and collectively, open the plastic. Make a couple of incisions there and just calmly pull back the plastic. That's it. And just take it all off. That's it. Just take the whole thing off. That's it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on, I'm on the console. That's it. Great. Fantastic. There we go. Get rid of that crap. Okay. What have we got? Ooh, the box slides out. That's very box like. Oh, and it's lovely. And I'm going to open the lid up now. And inside is, oh, it's some instructions. I'm a man, I don't need these. And here's a nice console. Oh, it's all shiny and white. I do like it. Oh, look at that. Lovely, lovely. Has buttons. Mm. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get the rest of this stuff out. Eh, don't need that. And there's two of the cartridges. One. That's a Namco collection. Ooh, feels nice. The Atari collection also feels nice. And that's right, the Interplay collection. Ooh, I like Earthworm Jim. Also feels nice. And I don't know, there's a micro USB. I was thinking about that. Anyway, let's get the stuff out of the way. And I'll keep the box for later. And let's start playing with this bad boy console. So how does it play? Well, I must say this device is very nice. I like the look. The retro theme runs very strong with this one and it feels distinct. Slightly bigger than a PSB, but smaller than a Switch, as you can see on screen. It works pretty well with my tiny Trump hands. It's very comfortable to use. The screen's sharp enough for the games. The buttons feel solid. The D-pad most reminiscent of a Genesis or Mega Drive controller. The shoulder buttons have the sort of clicking action that would make even the most prolific ASMR YouTuber explode in a shower of tingles. Check it out. The quality is good, and importantly, the quality of the emulation is good. This feels like a full console. 
The UI is basic but clear and very responsive, and you can have save states, and now after an update, you can remap the controls. You can also decide on the aspect ratio and choose between a standard or widescreen approach. It's charged by micro USB for about four hours playtime, and it even has a mini HDMI out if you want to whap it onto your screen at a nice 720p. I would totally do that if I hadn't been a numpty and realized I didn't have the said cable, despite thinking I had. Blonka. The price is good. I got this with three games for $79.99, and each cartridge comes at $14.99, which is a pretty good price considering the amount of games you get. The games are largely retro, but there are also some new games from the likes of Mega Cat or some unreleased from Pico Interactive. I really am also looking forward to the future release of Tanglewood and Xeno Crisis, which are currently available on Steam and other game platforms. The range of games are diverse and they're from across the 8-bit and 16-bit platform eras. So I really like this device, but why? Well, the main reason, and why I think this works so well, is it taps directly into my collecting riddled brain box. Look at these lovely little cartridges. I mean, just look at the cute bastards. They're all nice and solid. They have a booklet and oh yeah, just check out the number on the telling you which numbers of the collection you have. I just want to collect them all. Which is, when you think about it, quite interesting. From a games perspective, I own some of these already, or at least have access to them. I have a few favorites on each cartridge I own that I really like. Galaxian, Asteroids, Earthworm Jim, Battle Cars, and the rest I will play, but I probably won't play repeatedly but I still want to collect them because they just look so damn good on a shelf. And since I always state that I want to support the reissuing of games, I want to do it now. Of course, don't just take my word for it. Since so many of these games come from the golden age of arcade and home consoling, which is too close to the year of my birth for me to truly remember, I've reached out to our long-term collaborator here at Jampags, Stanley Crooked Fingers Smythe, a legend of the fish and chip shop arcade scene in the early 80s, to see what he thought of this console. Oh yeah, Rudy. Stunning bit of kit, this. Just lovely. You know what? If you'd have told me back in 1982 when I was down the Golden Sands Fish and Chip Shop, now Greg's by the way, that I'd be able to play these games on a portable television, I'd have shat myself in disbelief. But then again, you could do anything these days. I've even heard you can get a cheese toasty on a train now. What would I think of next, eh? Anyway, you know, the screen and buttons feel nice on my little fingers. My only complaint is the titles. Sure, there's some classics on these plastic boxes you lent me, but where are some of the old classics from the seafront chip shop days? You've got Centipede, but where's Bipedal Dot Man? What about all those old games I still hold the old score for, like Crystal Enema, Laser Tea Towel, or Alien Mouth Breathers? Where's Jibble Jabble Sack Juice? You know, they need to get some more of those classics out. Of course, I can't play this on account of my deformed fingers I got from the old days. I can't even pick it up. So strong words from an industry vet there. But is there anything I don't like, other than the fact that Cricket Fingers has smudged the screen with his hook hands? Well, just one, availability. See, there are seven more cartridges to collect, and since the launch in June, I just can't track any more down. I really want the indie collection of Mega Cap, but they're sold out as a few stockists, and stock isn't coming back until the end of August. I mean, this isn't the end of the world, and it means good things from a console launch perspective, but yeah, I want to play and collect more, and I want that shelf filling up, and I can't. Anyways, that's our quick review of the Evergade Retro Console. Well, let us know what you think. Have you got one? Thinking of getting one? Do you want an autograph from Stanley? Well, fat chance of that since the old gimmer can't even hold a pen. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe and check us out on social media below. Thanks very much. See you later.